Hi, I'm Mari Batani. Welcome to Singapore. This is a sophisticated, fast-moving city, and by the looks of these bronze statues along the new esplanade, Singapore shaking off its business image and going for a more relaxed look. Glass skyscrapers dominate the skyline in this ultra-modern city, but when you dig a little deeper, you'll find that Singapore's steamy past of trishaws, pearl luggers and open-air markets still hasn't disappeared completely. In this destination guide, we'll uncover some of the old charm and culture that Singapore is famous for and give you a few tips to make sure that you enjoy your stay. Singapore is probably one of the easiest cities in Asia to get around in. They have spent lots of money on their public transport system and it certainly shows. This is the MRT which stands for Mass Rapid Transit or Subway. Now this is the best and quickest way to get around town. An average one-way ticket will cost you less than $2. Trains run between 6am and midnight and they go every 3 to 4 minutes. Buses are also pretty cheap and there's plenty of them around. The only hitch is that you may have to wait 15 to 20 minutes at the stop. For sheer door-to-door -door convenience, you can't beat a taxi. They're pretty good value with an average inner city fare costing about $10. Singapore has been built around the river and a good way to get an idea of the layout of the inner city is to take a bum boat ride from Clark Quay and soak up the sights. From Clark Quay we travel down river past Boat Quay and out onto the harbour taking in the Esplanade and Merlion Park before heading back. The 8 metre tall merlion is a mythical creature that embodies the vitality and uniqueness of this island nation. Now there's even an onboard commentary and it is a little bit scripted and predictable but who knows, you might learn something. Jump off the boat at Merlion Park or take a stroll around the Esplanade. This area has recently been reclaimed and there's loads of restaurants, theatres and great views of the city. A half hour bum boat tour costs $12 per person or a one way trip to Merlion Park or the Esplanade will cost less than $5 per person. One of Singapore's main attractions is that it is a real cultural melting pot and there are still areas of the city that look pretty much as they have looked for the past 100 years. Areas like Chinatown, Katong and Little India. But I have discovered a great little spot. This is Kampong Glam just off Arab Street. Now this place isn't as well known as areas like Chinatown, but it's really gorgeous to just have a browse through. Hello. Hey, good morning. Kevin is an expat who now runs a B&B in Kampong Glam, so I caught up with him for a bit of a chat. Singapore seems to have become a lot more relaxed. How's it changed over the last few years? It's opened up a lot, actually. There's uh, the, the bar scene particularly, uh, the opening hours are extended, you, uh, you can drink outside, El Frisco. Um, there's a lot of new areas popped up. Clark Key has really uh, come alive and Boat Key is spectacular at night. Is it a fun place to visit? Do you recommend people come here? It is. I think it's underrated. It's, it had, had a reputation for being very sort of sterile and, and just for shopping. But actually there's a lot of little districts, Little India and uh, Arab Street here, that are, that are really great. And Chinatown's very vibrant. All of these places are really fantastic. She's going to show me around. Now tell me, I can smell mm. all the Indian spices. It smells absolutely delicious around here. Can you get good Indian food down here? 
Yes, I know. Everybody has a, a palate for spicy food. Yes, this is the place to come. Nick, what are we going to find here? Tell me a little bit about the area. Oh, I just can't begin. There are lots of things. And you want Indian music, you want scents, incense, and spices, and flowers for your hair. So anything Indian, you can get it here in Little India? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I love all their saris. The Chinese population is the biggest in Singapore, accounting for as much as 70% of the total population. The early Chinese immigrants all lived in the same part of the city, and Chinatown is still here today, much as it has been for hundreds of years. In the early days, it was full of prostitutes, opium dens, and even slave traders selling unwitting Chinese immigrants. People like my grandfather and his two uh, brothers came here uh, according to my father, with baskets ready to shovel gold. But you know, when they got here, those who survived, those who got here, will come to a place such as this, and then they'll auction for them like little pigs. The term we use for these men were little pigs. Secrets of the Red Lantern walking tours not only give you a good look around Chinatown, but you'll also get all the gossip about its ancient, seedy underbelly. Tours operate every Friday night from 6.30 to 8.30pm. Just meet up outside the Chinatown MRT station to join in on the tour. Now I highly recommend a walking tour around Chinatown. It is a great way to see this area. It's colourful here day and night. And as we've just heard, it also has a colourful history. It's a new day and I am in Orchard Road, Singapore's most famous shopping strip. Here to do what I do best, shop. Now Wee Tea, this just goes on and on. How many shops are there? Hundreds and loads of departmental stores. So much to choose from. What sorts of things can you buy in Orchard Road? Everything that you can need. Uh, can you pick up a bargain or is it more sort of expensive department stores? No, you can buy um, high price um, items and low price items and you can get some very good buys. Now, my, I'm so excited to be here. I think I could stay here for the whole day and maybe tomorrow too. A one day is not enough. <laughs> Singapore has always been known for cutting edge electronics and gadgets. In fact, a lot of the big computer companies are based here in Singapore. You can, of course, buy that kind of thing here at Orchard Road, but they are not the bargain that they may have been years ago. Now, once again, local knowledge has come to the rescue. If you are a technophile and you love gadgets, head back to Little India and Sim Lim Square. There are six levels of hardware, software, all kinds of gadgets. This is where the locals come to buy, so if you come, you're sure to get a bargain. Not all the prices are fixed and some shop owners at Simlim may try inflating the price for tourists. So have an idea of what you want to pay and bargain hard. The Chinatown markets are also high on the list for keen shoppers. There's a good variety of products on sale, especially traditional Chinese knickknacks. Even if you're not in the mood to buy, it's worth a visit just for the spectacle. Another market to practice your haggling and pick up a bargain is the Bugis Village Markets. Like Chinatown, there's lots on offer, but just be wary of cheap imitations of brand name products. The quality really does reflect the price. Singaporeans love their food, so much so that they often greet each other by saying, have you eaten yet? Yum, thank you. Now, if you're on a budget, don't worry, you can head to one of the many hawker centres or food courts. There is a huge variety of Asian food down here, really cheap and really tasty. This plate costs just $3, what a bargain. You'll find hawker centres all over the city, and they are very popular with the locals, especially at lunchtime. If you can't decide which stall to try, just look for the longest line of locals. It's often the best stall in the centre. If your body is a temple and you're serious about what you eat, this is the place to go to cure what ails you. The Imperial Herbal Restaurant. It specialises in providing food that's designed to balance up your yin and yang and 
restore your inner harmony. Let me see your tongue. It's okay, not too bad. Not too bad. Mm. It's not quite balanced. Maybe it's a little bit young from the lung. We're eating too much spicy food. That sounds right. So I have to go on a diet when I get home. That's mm, yes. I think it's the best choice when you go back. You should have a diet. Drink <laughs> more water. More rest. After chatting with Doris, I trust she knows exactly what I need. So I've left it up to her to order a meal for me that will leave me feeling re-energized. Today I give you this is called a hot on juice. It's very good for digestion. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this is the vegetables. There's a lot of fiber, it's called the pork tongue vegetables. And the wolfberry is good for improve the vision of the eye. And this is now what you should have. Is the, the the winter melon soup with a bamboo peach that can help you to cleanse your feet and the body. Mm, that is good. And anything that green has to be good for you. For a bit of local colour and flavour at reasonable prices, I can also recommend Food Street in Chinatown. The stalls are all very clean and the food is always fresh, so don't be scared off by the fact that it's an outdoor street market. The food is cheap and the atmosphere is fantastic. There's an endless supply of great quality food for all budgets in Singapore, but my tip is to go to a restaurant that has outdoor seating to take advantage of the balmy nights and the great view. Clark Key, the Esplanade and Boat Key all have tons of great spots overlooking the river so you won't have a problem finding that perfect place for you. Now I've gone for a bit of a different Singapore specialty. Most people come here for the chilli crab but take my advice and try the white or black pepper crab. It is delicious. The restaurants here at Boat Key are a little bit more expensive, but you are paying for that fantastic view. Well, that's all we have time for. I hope we've given you some ideas on how to make your stay here in Singapore a great one. Before you hang up your headsets, here are a few tips for your arrival. When you arrive, you will need to clear immigration and customs. Please have your passport and completed documents ready for inspection. If you are transferring to another flight and you have a boarding pass, follow the signs to the departure level and go to your departure gate. If you do not have a boarding pass, go to the transfer desk in concourse C or D. In the public arrivals hall, you will find currency exchange, tourist and accommodation information. If you need transport to the city, there's a variety of options. You can catch the airport shuttle bus. It operates from 7am until 11pm and departs every 15 minutes during peak times. Buy your tickets at the airport shuttle service counter in the arrivals hall. The MRT train is one of the cheapest ways to get into the city. Trains depart every 10 minutes from 5.30am until just after 11pm from the MRT station in Terminal 2. The trip takes about 45 minutes but you'll need to change trains to get all the way into the city. Public buses are also very cheap but they do take a little longer to get to town. They depart from the basement level of Terminal 1 from 6am until 11pm. For door-to-door -door convenience, a taxi to the city will only take around 30 minutes. They operate 24 hours a day and they're reasonably priced. A 50% surcharge applies after midnight. Limousine taxis are also available from the limousine service counter in the arrivals hall. They operate from 6am until 2am. If you have any more questions about your arrival or transfers, please ask your cabin crew or ground staff when you arrive. Enjoy your stay in Singapore.